All right, so recently this guy Renat hit me up on Facebook and asked me to talk about this new comic he and some of his associates have been working on called Hunting for Scorpion, the first of a brand new shared universe of gods, heroes, and demons. Now, obviously that sounded pretty awesome, so I agreed to check it out, and they sent me the first issue. Now, I read this thing like five times, and overall, I gotta say it was... Okay. I mean, as the jumping off point for what's supposed to be this whole shared universe with super people and gods or whatever, Hunting for Scorpion issue number one is kind of a weak effort. That having been said though, this is just the first issue. There's still a lot of potential in this issue for the rest of the stories in this universe, but look, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just get into it. Let's check out the very first issue of Hunting for Scorpion. So the story starts off introducing us to the character on the cover, who's apparently named Jacob, while also presenting this message welcoming us to the Forsaken World. Ooh, sounds cool. Makes you think we're gonna see some Something like a Mad Max style desolate wasteland or something, but with super people in it. Sounds awesome, right? The thing is though, we never actually see anything referred to as the Forsaken World again after this. Actually, from what I can tell, outside of old Jacob here doing stuff with a scorpion, we never actually see anything in this issue that wouldn't happen outside of our normal boring earth. So I guess this is a Forsaken World because the story takes place in a bad part of town? Anyway, let's keep reading. A mysterious bounty hunter marked by the powers beyond humans comprehension arrives to a small town on the border of USA and Mexico. His actions and methods launch a chain of bloody events that brings the town to the state of permanent chaos. Sounds awesome! I cannot wait to see that! Hey, wait a minute, this just looks like normal Mexico. Where's all that chaos you promised me, comic? All I see are some cops and a bunch of signs in English. I don't know what it is, but those signs are kind of bothering me a little bit. Like, you know how you see something that really shouldn't bug you, but then it ends up bugging you a lot? Yeah, that's one of those things. I mean, I know we're like right on the border of the United States and Mexico here, but I highly doubt a lot of English speakers or American tourists are going in that bar. Even if the place has a neat little welcome mat on the doorstep. Either way, a CIA agent shows up to the <clears throat> taco bar, while the local police are marking off the place and puking up pea soup and mushrooms. Sheriff Jimenez, I'm Agent Brooks. Miguel! I don't know why, but every time I read this part, I keep thinking about those llamas like, Carl! Carl! Miguel! Carl! Miguel! Carl! Anyway, Agent Brooks here heads into the bar to check out what happened, finding what's hinted at being a massive bloody massacre. Before we actually get to see any of that bloody mess though, which would have been cool, we jump three hours back in time, back to a point where this dive bar was apparently so evil, even the the local dogs had a problem with it. I mean, I know there's some badass joints out there, but this bar, the taco bar, with that super threatening welcome mat, this place is fucking hardcore. I mean, clearly it is, because inside the bar, a couple low lives, this zombie looking guy, and Asian Stevie Wonder are all busy celebrating something. It's not really clear what they're celebrating, when Jacob, the scorpion guy from the cover, wanders in and orders a beer. Hey, let her go, or I'm calling the cops. Oh, look at that, that worked out well, didn't it? Hey, gringo! <laughs> hmm? What? Seriously? Gringo? How do they know that this dude's white? They literally look exactly the same as Jacob. Well, for one panel at least, then they turn gray for some reason. Either way, we find out in another flashback that Jacob's at the bar because he's a bounty hunter, hired to track down the gang members that slaughtered a family on the highway with a machete. I love this guy's reaction to the whole thing too. He's just like, oh yeah, rock and roll baby, murder! At least he's not like this guy. Hey, I know we're sauntering away, but give me a second, I gotta take a leak. We see Jacob being hired to track the gang members down in the next panel, and oh my god, what the fuck is that? Looks like a zombie got bashed up but managed to crawl away halfway through. Holy hell, did I switch to reading an exorcist comic and I didn't realize it? What the fuck, dude? Anyways, after seeing that monstrosity, we jump back to the bar where Jacob starts a fight with the gang by touching the scorpion tattoo on the gang leader's chest, causing him to explosively fly across the bar. As soon as he gets up though, he suddenly sees a bunch of cops loitering around the bar, just casually drinking and smoking while being surrounded by the bodies of his gang friends. Of course, he doesn't take a second to think, huh, a bunch of cops just killed everybody but me and then started hanging out instead of doing cop stuff. That's a little weird. No, instead this dude immediately opens fire and kills everybody, finding out after the fact that he was just seeing things and he just killed his own men. Then out of nowhere, the leader's tattoo comes to life and just starts stabbing him over and over again. Like damn, Scorpion, when you start making the dude leak blood everywhere, I'm pretty sure you're getting into some overkill territory. Then he dies, while missing a thumb apparently. With that, Jacob gathers up his stuff and calmly heads out the door. This is where we jump back to the present, where the sheriff complains that Agent Brooks has to call this into his superiors. And that's it. That's the end of the first issue of Hunting for Scorpion. Now look, for all the jokes and stuff I did in this video, the comic really isn't that bad. The story's a little bare bones for my taste, more on this later, but to be fair, this is the first issue. I'm not expecting like a bunch of plot, characters, character development, all that stuff crammed into the story right off the bat, you know what I mean? Plus, the fact that we don't actually know anything about these characters, that nothing's really cemented about any of them, does allow for a bunch of possibilities in future installments of the series. I honestly feel like these guys can take this story in a million and one directions because it's so open, and that's a good thing. Honestly, I'm expecting some kind of big crazy twist in the middle of this story, like Lost or The Good Place. I love that show, by the way. 
They're never going to call a train to take us to the bad place. They can't, because we're already here. This is the bad place. Moving over to the art, I know that it's kind of rough in some spots, more on that later, but I kind of like that the book overall was pretty rough and unpolished looking. I think it fits pretty well with the tone I think they were trying to go for, like this dirty, gritty feeling, you know? Plus this shitty dive bar, the taco bar, seriously, I can't get over that name, has a welcome mat. I know it's probably unintentional, but I think it's hilarious. How can you hate a welcome mat in front of what's supposed to be a rough and scary place while it's also called the taco bar? Seriously, that's awesome. Now that having been said, here's the thing. There are a ton of problems problems here. I mean, I know I gotta give this thing a little leeway considering it's an original work, it's only the first issue, these guys don't have like a full staff with tons of experience in the industry or anything like that, but come on, there's only so much I can excuse here. For one thing, the story for this issue is supposed to be centered around this random bar in Mexico, but pretty much everything, like the cop cars, the police tape, all the super generic signs, it's all written in English. I'm not saying there aren't any English speakers in Mexico, but wouldn't you expect to see some, oh, I don't know, Spanish floating around there? Speaking of the bar, the massacre at the beginning of the story was made out to be like super gory and disgusting, but when we actually get to see it, it just looks like a normal gang crime scene. I mean, Sheriff Clickbait here even throws up because it's apparently so awful he's never seen anything like it. Seriously? This dude's a cop! He honestly can't handle a couple dead bodies? What is this, his first day on the job? Really though, I think my biggest problem with the story aspect of this issue is that there's no real sense of world building here. I mean, I know I gave it a pass for being an open story, room for potential growth, it's only the first issue, blah blah blah, but I don't really know who any of these people are or what their motivations are. Why does Jacob have powers? Why is he a bounty hunter? Who is Agent Brooks? Why is he hunting Jacob? He knows the guy's name, so I guess they've been hunting him for a while? Are there other people like Jacob? Why aren't they hunting him down? I kept having a bunch of questions like that, and it kind of kept dragging me out of the experience. It just bugged the hell out of me. Moving over to the art side, there's definitely a few issues there too. I know it's supposed to be a little rough, but I had a hard time trying to figure out what certain things were. Like, it took me a second to get that these dead bodies were supposed to be the gang members that were hanging around the leader, or that Agent Brooks stepped on some guy's eyeball. I think? I still can't figure out what that's supposed to be. Overall, I think my biggest problem with this comic is that everyone looks the same. They're either all the same shade of brown or gray in some cases, so it's weird when one of them starts shouting things like gringo. I know I said this earlier, but come on, you look the same, dude. How would you know he's white? And when these people don't look the same, they look crazy, like these zombies here. Is that what this is turning into? A zombie story? For real though, I hope the artwork gets touched up just a little bit by the second issue. All in all though, I have to give the first issue of Hunting for Scorpion a 3 out of 5. There's a ton of issues with this issue, but honestly, I think there's a lot of potential and room for growth with this story. I think I'll check out the second issue whenever it comes out. But anyways, guys, that's my take on this new comic, Hunting for Scorpion. If you guys like this video, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked what you saw in this comic, you maybe want to grab a copy for yourself, then go ahead and click the Amazon link down in the description. You can pick up your own digital copy for just a couple bucks. If you do end up getting a copy, leave them a review, let them know what you thought, and don't forget to let them know I sent you. And with that, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button, maybe leave me a comment while you're at it, and go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to check out any of my social media pages. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. All those links are going to be in the description below. And I've also got my last video right there in the middle of your screen, so if you want to check that out, go ahead and click it, check it out. Alright, and I will see you all next time.